नमस्कार स्वागत है आप सभी का आज सवेरे में टुडे विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द हेरिटेज द टूरिज्म ऑफ नॉट ओनली दिल्ली नॉट ओनली द सिस्टर सिटीज बट इंडिया ऑन द होल getting into the conversation let's start with the morning raga एक क्विक लुक एट द थॉट ऑफ द डे दुनिया एक किताब है और जो लोग यात्रा नहीं करते हैं वे केवल इसका एक ही पृष्ठ पढ़ते हैं द वर्ल्ड इज अ बुक एंड दो डू नॉट ट्रेवल रीड ओनली अ पेज सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विथ टूडे डिस्कशन विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट टूरिज्म हेरिटेज एंड हिस्ट्री ऑफ डेली वॉट डज इट होल्ड फॉर यू what are the heritage sites how we can protect it and all this and more in the today segment let me welcome miss swapna little she is a convener of intax delhi chapter a very warm welcome thank you very much swapna ji when we talk about tourism i think all of us can get very easily connected to it especially when talk about india so how do you see the sector tourism on the whole um uh, of course i mean it goes without saying that we have so much potential in india we have so many sites that are uh, and i because i know heritage i will talk about heritage sites mm. all over the country there's such a variety of wonderful things to see and it is i think it remains to us to make sure that it is sufficiently promoted it is sufficiently developed 
and uh, tourists have a great experience. Mm -hmm. So that is definitely, you know, uh, it, it's a huge untapped resource that we have. So when we talk about from the economic point of view, do you think the sector is economically rapidly growing? I hope it is. But then again, sensitivity is also required. You have to, for instance, uh, one important thing is that when you provide infrastructure in areas such as hills and all that, uh, it, it uh, you know, you have to make sure that it is sustainable, it is economic, it's uh, not only economically sustainable, but also ecologically sustainable. So all those issues are there. But yes, it's growing very fast. So when we talk about India's geographical setting, you know, we yeah. are being blessed by the Almighty. Right. From the hills to the sand to the beaches, it's beauty, you know, the, from the serene nature to the climate. So do you think we are actually utilizing this blessing to the utmost? Uh, maybe not to the utmost, but yes. We ha but certainly we have, uh, we, we, are, we are doing things and we know that, you know, sort of from skiing in the Himalayas mm. to our wonderful beaches and, uh, you know, the heritage mm. uh, monuments that I talked about, certainly. I think we have a lot of stuff and we are we are we are making progress but there's more scope certainly absolutely but there are certain areas of concerns as well uh that India on the whole when I talk about yes of course there'll always be uh, you know uh, areas of concern one concern I think I talked about the ecological aspect mm. I would also like to say that when we talk about heritage uh, say uh, buildings mm and uh, I'm associated with an organization which is concerned with heritage buildings to quite an extent also. And I would say that we, um, we have to draw a very fine balance with mm. making sure that we protect and promote uh, at the same time. Because uh, in the hurry to kind of uh, sort of suddenly develop a lot of infrastructure, we shouldn't uh, ignore our older cities, how they are planned, how they are how they are working. Mm. So, you know, you cannot, uh, you know, for instance, if you have a beautiful old Haveli or a old palace or something, it's good to make it into a, a maybe a tourist um, a, a hotel or mm. a small bread and breakfast or something. Wonderful. Do that. But you have to be careful that it is done in a sensitive manner. We mustn't destroy heritage as we are building up this kind of tourist infrastructure. But nowadays, as you know, the trend is changing. We are not only seeing the people outside India, but within India, like for the weekend getaway, getaways they go for. For instance, as you rightly mentioned yeah. about a Haveli for that matter. Yeah. So they do really look for an option wherein, and they want different, you know, they don't want to repeat a place. I think uh, that's the great potential we have that, you know, heritage, the advantage with heritage is that it's already there. You don't mm. have to build anything. Mm. It's already there. You know, if you're going to trying to develop, say, a ski resort, mm. you have to put in a lot of infrastructure. Mm. As far as heritage is concerned, those buildings are already there for you. Mm. You just need to make sure that they are conserved a little nicely, put in a little bit of uh, a additional stuff that you need to put in, and you need to promote it. And you have already a resource. And as you said, people are interested. People mm. want to explore new places and they want to explore it differently. Mm. Uh, Delhi, for instance, I'll give you a very simple example. Uh, say 20 years ago, nobody talked about heritage. Today, there are people doing, for instance, um, heritage walks over the weekends. And there is a huge response. And it's mostly from people who are living in the city. They're already in the city, but they want to find out more. They want to look at the city differently. They want to explore different areas in the city, for instance, Old Delhi. Uh, so they want to come and uh, they want an experience where they can go, they can eat, they can be talk, mm. you know, sort of people can tell them about the heritage, they can shop, the whole package. So narrow it down to Delhi. You are a convener yeah. of in Intax Delhi chapter. Yes. So what role and responsibility you play being a convener? And it's almost been an year. Yes, and uh, I have been convener for a year. Before that, I was co-convener, and mm. I've been associated with Intac for a number of years now. Uh, Intac is a very special organization, obviously. Uh, it's a membership organization based on volunteers, mm. and that's our real strength. We have uh, committed volunteers in Delhi, in other parts of the country mm. also. It's a countrywide organization, and they uh, do a great job. It's people who have a passion for heritage, all kinds of heritage, whether it is saving endangered languages or saving crafts or saving old buildings they are all uh, uh, the mandate is to increase awareness among mm. the public so we do a great job of that i think 
and in Delhi we have been doing um, heritage walks, we have been uh, publishing tourist literature, we have teamed up with uh, government organizations also for instance the Delhi department, uh, state department of archaeology to preserve buildings. So, we do a lot of uh, things like this in collaboration with government, in collaboration with people, with other organizations and uh, I think it has worked. We have brought heritage on in the imagination shall we say. People now think about heritage. Uh, I, I would say every day you open the newspaper there is some heritage related mm. news or some story something is there. So, people are thinking about heritage more. So, so when you talk about Delhi, you know, Delhi ha is the heart of India, we would say, you know, it's, we always say ki Delhi hai, dil walo ki Delhi hai. So, before we get into discussion about Delhi, let's take a quick look at this report. Delhi, yu dil mein vasi hai ki har khas waap sab ka dil hai Delhi. Delhi mukam hai, thikana hai, pata hai. Delhi be asro ka asra bhi hai. और दिल्ली का दिल भी देखिए जो यहाँ आया उसे अपना लिया और वो भी यहीं का होकर रह गया ऐसी है दिल्ली अगर मशहूर शायर जौक ने भी कहा कि कौन जाए जौक दिल्ली की गलियाँ छोड़कर तो गालिब का मोहल्ला भी तो है दिल्ली और बहुत से मुगल बादशाहों की ये राजधानी भी रही और आज भी दिल्ली देश की राजधानी है समय बदला लोग बदली सड़क कूचे गलिया तो कायम रही ही लेकिन वक्त की रफ्तार ने दिल्ली को आज की दुनिया का हम सफर बना दिया यही वजह है कि रोज नामालूम कितने सैलानी दिल्ली घूमने आते हैं दिल्ली में क्या कुछ नहीं है देखने के लिए ये गालिब का शहर ये जौक की गलियाँ ये कुतुब मीनार इसे कुतुबुद्दीन एबक ने बनवाया था जिसकी शान आज भी देखते ही बनती है और बस उसके करीब ही अशोक की लाट भी है जहां अक्सर लोग अपना भाग्य आजमाते हैं ये दिल्ली का लाल किला है ये ऐतिहासिक इमारत न जाने कितने पलों की गवाह रही है इस किले ने दिल्ली को जिया और गढ़ा भी है दिल्ली के लाल किले पर तिरंगा फहराने की तमन्ना 15 अगस्त उन्नीस को पूरी हुई ये वो ही लाल किला है जहां भारतीय आजाद हिंद फौज के तीन महान सेनानियों आरोप मुकदमा चलाया गया तो एक आवाज हम सब ने सुनी लाल किले से आई आवाज सहगल ढिल्लो शाह नवाज तो दिल्ली जब भी आए लाल किले के इस गौरव को साझा जरूर करें थोड़ा सा पीछे लौटते हैं ये है दिल्ली का पुराना किला कहते हैं कभी इंद्रप्रस्थ नाम से पांडवों की राजधानी रही है दिल्ली तो इस पुराने किले से पहचान करने के लिए यहाँ विजिट करना मत भूलिए वो सामने खड़ा है इंडिया गेट आजादी के मतवालों दीवानों को सलाम करता हुआ और हर भारतीय को गर्व से सर उठाने का पल देता हुआ यही अमर जवान ज्योति है जब दिल्ली आए तो इंडिया गेट नाम के तीर्थ पर आना ना भूले देखने को बहुत कुछ है यहाँ दिल्ली का चिड़ियाघर समझे वाइल्ड लाइफ को हजरत अमीर खुसरो के पीर निजामुद्दीन औलिया साहब की दरगाह भी तो आपको आवाज देती है अपने पास बुलाती है अब आपको लोटस टेंपल भी जरूर जाना चाहिए आर्किटेक्चर का बेहद शानदार नमूना और अनूठी मिसाल है लोटस टेंपल। अरे चांदी चौक तो आप गए ही नहीं जरा यहाँ की रौनक तो देखिए कोई आज ऐसी नहीं बरसों ऐसी चांदनी चौक यू ही रोशन है यही करीब से जाने पर आपको दिल्ली की जामा मस्जिद भी मिल जाएगी अल्लाह के इस घर को करीब से देखना अपने आप में एक किस्म का सुकून ही है यू तो नेशनल आर्ट ऑफ गैलरी नेशनल म्यूजियम मुगल बादशाह हुमायूं का मकबरा बिना देखे मत जाइएगा तो दिल्ली दिल से बुला रही है आपको दिल्ली पूरी दुनिया ऐसी जुड़ी हुई है जब चाहे जैसे चाहे आ जाइए दिल्ली यहाँ तक पहुँचने के लिए न रास्तों की कमी है न ट्रेन न बसों न हवाई जहाजों की कोई कमी है अब तक तो दिल्ली से मोहब्बत हो ही गई होगी आपको तो फिर सोचना क्या चले आइए दिल्ली कनॉट प्लेस पर चहल कदमी और शॉपिंग का अपना ही मजा है और दिल्ली के जो जायके हैं, उनका तो लुत्फ आप ही लेंगे दिल्ली से दिल मिल जाने को दिल्ली कहते हैं दिल्ली को यूँ ही नहीं देश का दिल कहते हैं 
you know, I think uh, round across the India, everybody can get connected to Delhi with something or the other. Mm -hmm. You are looking after Delhi especially. So tell us something about, throw some light on the history of Delhi, you know, which is just not there in the, the, the uh, you know, the Google or for that matter, but something interesting about mm -hmm. our Delhi. You know, uh, when I was, I was researching a book, hmm. which I r wrote recently, it was published earlier this year. It was on Shah Jahanabad, which people, we usually think of it as Old Delhi or Chandni mm. Chowk. And this was a city which was established by Shah Jahan, the Emperor Shah Jahan in the middle of the 17th century. And uh, while I was doing research on the history of Shah Jahanabad for this book, which spans 300 years, I realized that the people of Delhi, they are very dynamic. Mm. All the time, it is the people of Delhi who have come forward, mm. uh, you know, uh, and done all sorts of amazing things. So, uh, and it's been also a place where Delhi is characterized. Somebody asked me what, who is a Delhi person, a typical Delhi person? And you know, what is special? I think most Delhi people have come from somewhere else. Mm. That is what is special about Delhi. You know, every other place has its parochial nature, you know, hum mm. is jagha ke hain, hum yaha ke hain, Delhi mein sab kahi aur se jayen. So it's basically a bouquet of all yes. the flowers, you'll get all the flavors. Yeah, people have come from everywhere and have made it their home and they have brought their own culture to the place also. Mm. So it's a, it's a city which absorbs everybody and it accepts all cultures, all languages. I mean, look at the, mm. you know, somebody was just telling me that, look, the Delhi ka jo aaj sabse popular street food is Momo. Hai. <laughs> <laughs> you know, think about it, how uh, people, are, De Delhi people are open. They are open-minded and open-hearted. So they are willing to accept everybody. And that's been a case throughout history, not only today. So, you know, when we say it's so vibrant and it's so dynamic, but do you think when talk about the heritage side, the it's we can say the awareness has been growing among the people, especially among the youth, how to protect them and conserve them? A little bit. I would say a little bit. I would say if you go to uh, any school child and you say, ke, if you talk about a heritage site, first they will say that you do graffiti on it, you should keep it clean. That is, to that level, there is a lot of But do they actually do that or these are the mere words? Uh, but well, let me say the average school child in Delhi is now getting more aware. But hmm. to, you know, there are enough people who will not hmm. ko karna hai, they will <laughs> deface uh, places. But uh, that that sort of awareness is growing. But I think what is needed is a little bit greater awareness. Hmm. For instance, ke agar aap dear so saal purani ghar mein reh rahe hain, wo bhi heritage ho sakta hai. Ya aapke paas aapke ghar mein uh, purani saadiyan hain, wo bhi heritage hai. You know, these are, uh, these are handicrafts hain. You know, these kind of things are also heritage. And how to, what is their value? How to preserve them? How to document them? All these things. Uh, that, that awareness needs to grow. Absolutely. So, in text, you know, what role does it play, especially when talk about the preserving these heritage sites? Uh, well, I, uh, as far as in tech is concerned, we are teaming up with the Delhi state to help uh, preserve uh, heritage. We have done a lot of uh, projects. Wherever there is need for heritage protection, mm. we always try and make at least, uh, you know, try and talk to uh, the pe common people. We try and talk to government authorities and advise them about uh, how heritage should be protected. So we are progressing, we are developing not only with say Delhi but tourism of India on the whole. Time for a short little break but lots more action soon on the other side of the break so stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back, you are watching Aad Savere. Let's go to the history of the history of the history and what is special in today's day. Do you know what is the history of today's day? सत्रह में आज ही के दिन कोलकाता को भारत की राजधानी बनाया गया था 1930 में भारत में उच्च न्यायालय की प्रथम महिला मुख्य न्यायाधीश लीला सेठ का जन्म हुआ था उन्नीस में भारत के पूर्व क्रिकेट खिलाड़ी नवजोत सिंह सिद्धू का जन्म पंजाब राज्य के पटियाला जिले में हुआ था 1978 में आक्रमक बल्लेबाज वीरेंद्र सहवाग का जन्म हुआ था उन्नीस में ऑस्ट्रेलिया की राजधानी सिडनी में ओपेरा हाउस को पहली बार आम जनता के लिए खोला गया उन्नीस में उत्तराखंड के उत्तरकाशी में 6.8 दशमलव तीव्रता के भूकंप से 1000 से ज्यादा लोगों की मौत हो गई थी 20 अक्टूबर को विश्व ऑस्टोपोरोसिस दिवस मनाया जाता है 
So here we are talking about tourism of Delhi, the heritage sites of Delhi, the conservation and preservation of heritage. I have with me Ms. Swapna Little. Swapna ji, when we talk about the branding, you know, branding we see in every sector for that matter because actually, you know, people, especially when we talk about today's generation, they look about the brands. But branding, the packaging, do you think of Delhi is being done? And if yes, do you think, are we in the, on the right track? You know, sort of ultimately everything is relative. So, hmm. uh, at one level you'd say that in Delhi, people uh, know There are, uh, you know, the three world heritage sites are there. Hmm. Uh, Kutub Minar is there, Humayun's tomb, Red Fort, many other. But again, still I feel that more can be done. And there are uh, many untapped. Uh, let me talk about very simply some of the places that have great potential but we don't probably know about them hmm. enough. There is, uh, for instance, if you go to Kutub Minar, hmm. the average tourist goes there, quickly goes to the Kutub complex, ek ghante mein jaldi se you see Kavarki, everything and then you run away from Absolutely. there. But I would say that a tourist, if we promote it properly, a tourist can spend one whole day in that Meheroli area because you go and visit the World Heritage Site, see the Kutub Minar, all the complex around it. Then you go maybe to the Mehroli village. It's a beautiful village. People don't know about it. It's got, it's got a beautiful, it's called the Shamsi Talab. It's got a beautiful uh, step well, the Gandhar Ki Bauli, which is a 13th century step well. Mm. They have the Dargah of uh, Qutub Sahab. They, they have the palace, which was Bahadur Shah Zafar's palace. It's called Zafar Mahal. Mm. People uh, don't know about these things. You can go and see all this there. Then you can move on to the Mehroli Archaeological Park. Meroli Archaeological Park is special because it has buildings which are like from the 10th century, 11th century, the Lal Court walls built by the Tomars, that those mm -hmm. are there. You have Balban, the Emperor Balban's tomb, you have beautiful, uh, a beautiful Bauli called the Rajoki Bauli. So all these, there are many, many, many structures there. So I ca you can easily spend a whole day in Meroli and people don't even know about so what how should we do the there? branding and the packaging of all <laughs> these, you know, the un we would say the ignored exactly. ones. Yes, exactly. I think sabse zada zarurat hai coordination ki. We need to coordinate. Uh, you know, there are, uh, uh, you know, sort of we have to have a plan hmm. which coordinates all this, you know. Otherwise what happens is ASI is looking after Kutub Minar, hmm. then the Meroli Archaeological Park is a separate uh, DDA park. So those kind of things, it just requires a little bit of coordination of our efforts. And I think great things can happen in Delhi. But you might be coming across certain, you know, the, the, the challenges as well. Because, oh, you yes, know, though we do say sitting in Delhi or looking after Delhi as a chapter. Yeah. But as you said, there's so much of variety. Yes. So there might be certain challenges standing up against you. Yes, of well. course, uh, those challenges are always there. Because I'm talking about coordination. That's the most important mm -hmm. challenge. How to coordinate all our efforts so that uh, it works out well for everybody. And uh, you are an author as well, so <laughs> as you just mentioned about your yes. book about on Chani Chalk. Tell us something about, you know, that love for pen. First of all, let me tell you, I'm a student of history. When I was, uh, when I was in my class 11 and 12, I had the good fortune of having a wonderful teacher. Mm -hmm. And I think school teachers make such a difference. Mm, and, absolutely. And I had this teacher who was inspiring. And from her, I really learned a love of history. And I was very inspired by her. I decided I, that's what I'm going to study. So then I did my BA and then I did my MA. Mm. And for a while I was, I had this idea that maybe I'll sit for the civil services exam. But that time I was so much in love with history that I said, Chalo chodo, I'm going to do history only. So then I did my MPhil also. And finally I did a PhD on Delhi. Mm. So I did a PhD on Delhi's history. So I was used to, I had developed into this person who was researching and writing constantly mm. and I was researching and writing on Delhi mm. particularly with my PhD so that's where the writing began mm. and simultaneously the heritage walks began so the first book that I actually wrote which came out in 2011 was a book on uh, self-guided walking tours in Delhi so it was called Delhi 14 historic walks and it was for somebody can just pick it up and go and explore the city with it. It was self-guided. A guiding point. probably. Yes. It was just you can uh, instead of following a mm. guide or using a guide, you just pick up the book. It will tell you where to go. Uh, it will show you a map of the place. It will tell you about each of the buildings. So it was like following a mm -hmm. walking tour. So that was my first book. And then of course I wrote on Chandni Chowk which was uh, about the city of Old Delhi. 
and I really love Chandni Chowk, so that was <laughs> uh, sort of a natural kind of uh, project for me to take up. But Chandni Chowk, especially when you talk about Delhi, you know, Purani Delhi, it has its own taste, its own flavor, mm -hmm. especially not only in India, but around the globe, you know, yeah. people are in love with Chandni Chowk. So do we feel that, find that love in your writings as well? Uh, I hope you do, but my aim was to tell people what they don't know about Chandni Chowk. You know, people do know uh, about its eating places mm. and about, all, you know, that, that kind of information is there. What you will see when you go there, mm. people do know that. But what I wanted to show was when you go to this city, when you see its buildings, when you see its little narrow lanes, what is the history in those lanes? What happened here? You know, those are the kind of things I wanted to, you know, people talk about Nadir Shah, the Nad Nadir Shah's attack and invasion. What really happened? that day mm. when this uh, took place or for instance um, you know the uh, Aurangzeb when he deposed his father and he uh, had uh, Dara Shako killed what really happened that day you know so how did the people of Delhi react all those kind of things so I just wanted to bring the freedom movement for instance mm -hmm. what happened during the freedom movement in Chandni Chowk the area we call Chandni Chowk really what used to happen how, what kind of public meetings they were there, what kind of protests they were there. Mm. So all those kind of things I have tried to bring the history which people may not know uh, into that book. Absolutely. So from, from Chani Chowk, what's the up next are you paying <laughs> Well, agar Delhi ka puche, so as far as, you know, Delhi people say there have been so many cities mm. and after Shah Janabad, uh, the next city was New Delhi which the British built hmm. in the 20th century. So this book is about how that city came to be built. What is What was its early history? Absolutely. So that's so the from Delhi to New Delhi, yeah. what wings, you know, it spreads <laughs> and what's new. We'll be continuing our discussion, but very small break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. You're watching Art Savere. We are here talking about tourism, but I do think so as far as traveling is concerned before that fitness is the main question. So let's take our fitness tip of the day. Pranayam Nadi Shodhan ya Anulom Vilom Pranayam Kramashah Pai Tatha Dai Nasika Chidron Se Saas Lena Hai ध्यान की मुद्रा में बैठ जाएं, मेरुदंड सीधा रखें, सिर ऊंचा तथा आंखें बंद हों, शरीर को कुछ गहरी सांसें लेकर आराम की स्थिति में लाएं। बाईं हथेली को बाईं घुटने पर ज्ञान मुद्रा में रखें, दायां हाथ नासाग्र मुद्रा में होना चाहिए। दाएं अंगूठे को दाहिने नासिका छिद्र पर रखें, बाईं नासिका छिद्र से श्वास अंदर लें। फिर इसे बंद कर लें। दाहिने नासिका छिद्र से श्वास बाहर निकालें। अगली बार दाहिने नासिका छिद्र से सांस भीतर लें। दाहिना नासिका छिद्र बंद करें और बाईं नासिका छिद्र से श्वास बाहर निकालें। यह नाड़ी शोधन या अनुलोम विलोम प्राणायाम का एक चक्र है। पांच चक्र और पूरे करें। जो अनुलोम विलोम प्राणायाम प्रारंभ करने वाले नए लोग हैं, उनके लिए श्वास अंदर खींचने और बाहर करने का समय समान होना चाहिए। धीरे-धीरे इनके समय का अनुपात बढ़ाकर एक अनुपात दो करना चाहिए। सांस धीमी, स्थिर तथा नियंत्रित होनी चाहिए। इस प्राणायाम का उद्देश्य ये पूरे शरीर को पोषित करता है, ये चित्त को शांत करता है और एकाग्रता बढ़ाने में सहायता देता है, ये प्राण शक्ति बढ़ाता है और तनाव तथा व्यग्रता के स्तर को कम करता है, ये कफ संबंधी दोषों का भी निवारण करता है। I'm in conversation with Miss Swapna Little. So, Apna Ji, when, it, you, when we talk about Delhi, you know, there might be many of the areas which have been unignored and unexplored and which are being, you know, still, you know, which are being covered and people don't know about them, but they are beautiful, they are heritage as far as you're concerned. So, would you like to name a few? Yes, certainly. Uh, 
I would like to name actually the Mughal gardens of Delhi. People do not think, when they think of Mughal garden, they think of the garden which is in the Rashtrapati Bhavan, hmm, which is of course wonderful. Haan. But kitne logon ko ye malum hai ke Delhi mein bhi Mughal gardens hain, Mughalon ke banai huye. So one very important one is Shalimar Bagh. Shalimar Bagh, people think it is a colony, right? Hmm. <laughs> but there is actually a Shalimar Bagh, there is a Bagh there and uh, that Shalimar Bagh is there and it's got a huge amount of uh, historical significance because in that Bagh Aurangzeb was crowned emperor. All right. Yeah. So uh, that is there. Um, they have uh, also Roshanara Bagh hmm. which is was laid out by the daughter of Shah Jahan Roshanara Begum. There is Kudsiya Bagh which is near the ISBT Kashmiri Gate ISBT which was laid out by the wife of Muhammad Shah, the emperor, uh, her name, she, her title was Kudsi Begum. So, she laid that out. So, there are these uh, wonderful places, you know, these hidden secrets should not be hidden because they are mm. right there open for everybody to see. Often these parks are used for people for walking in, uh, for recreation, but the, I think the heritage is not very well known. But do you people think uh, it is not known why is not being maintained to that level? Is it being served or the branded as we just discussed about it to that level? Yeah, I think you are very right. It is the branding, you mm. know. Are we promoting it? What are we telling people about the mm. history of a place? So, uh, one uh, thing that Intac and I, we have been very uh, insistent on is har jagha pe signage is very important. Mm. So, for instance, Lodi Garden. Lodi Garden is another garden which mm. is a very popular place in Delhi. What we have done is if you go and see, every monument and this was an ASI and Delhi state project mm. uh, has been done both of both have done this every heritage building has a sign board telling you nicely you know mm. with pictures and you know now we have lovely new technology you can put mm. pictures on sign boards also so beautiful pictures and everything explaining about the building and I think people when they read that their experience is different because they can at least understand what the building is. And they can is. connect it to somewhere. Exactly. And if you care about, if you understand the building, then you will care about mm. it. And if you care about it, then heritage is protected. So, do you think not only from the government side, from the people side, do you see any kind of negligence when we talk about the heritage side, not only Delhi, but India on the whole? Exactly. I think we uh, we are very quick to say, Are government kuch nahi kar rahi hai. Mm. Uh, What are we doing? You know, how much are we willing to do for our heritage? You know, if we uh, go to a place, how careful are we that, you know, this is something that other people also will need to enjoy. So, we ma should make sure that we do not spoil it. Or as I said, if we live in an old building, how much attention will be paid to the fact that this is an old building, we need to respect it. So, uh, you know, these things are there. Definitely, citizens have a very important role. and. Uh, Organizations such as Intact try to inculcate that in the citizen. Mobile apps, basically, right. in every field for that matter, from groceries to you know from clothes and your furniture, for everything we have an app. Do you yeah. think even for the heritage side we should have certain mobile apps? There are apps. There are some very nice ones, mm. and Intact has also been providing some research uh, input for an app to uh, to help. Uh, you know, it works like a sort of an audio guide. So, when the tourist goes mm. to the site, they can download it and they, they can, can play. Uh, play it and they can uh, learn more about the monuments. There are people who are working on these, so they are coming out. So, you know, we are actually utilizing the new technology to the best of its level. Exactly. And, you know, it's been like so many years, it's been long, you're connected to tourism. Do you think how it has grown and what development have you seen in the sector over the years? Uh, I think a lot of development that we have seen is that people are seeing economic benefits in it mm -hmm. and there is a lot of entrepreneurs have come up. When I was a child, you went to small places, a little off the beaten track, you did not even have hotels. Mm -hmm. You maybe had a government rest house or mm -hmm. a tourist uh, you know, accommodation provided by the government. Now, many more entrepreneurs have come into it, have made hotels, have used heritage uh, properties to make hotels. So, all that private entrepreneurship is coming in in a bigger way. Mm -hmm. And I think that has been the main uh, change that I have seen. And do you think there is a slight change in the taste of the people as well, you know, the purchasing power of the people, mm -hmm. you know, they are ready to share off even big bucks from their pocket as far as the travel is concerned. 
exactly and that's why you have so many indians going abroad now and we should tap into those people who want to explore new places and have the economic means to do it uh, we can entice them to discover their own country in a different way you know tourism is i think so is an attraction to many people but when we connect to history many people might take a step back oh no we need to study history if we want to know about the tourism for that matter we like to talk to those students and we want to address people who why history is so interesting as you just rightly said because of one teacher but now the people have this option if you want to give some message to those people that no history is not that boring for that matter and tourism has a wide options yeah it's true uh, you know one of the things that we do is we take school children for walks college students for walks and these are not college students who are studying history they are not necessarily mm -hmm. studying history okay. they might be doing other things but when they go to the site and when they see uh, the buildings mm -hmm. and they are told the history they are amazed because they mm, have not heard of all absolutely. these things because these are things which are not taught in school so uh, their outlook on history really changes mm. so that is also i think the i think one important part has been there has been a greater impact on curriculum mm. so school curriculums now particularly involve a lot more emphasis on heritage that has really helped also because then they understand heritage and they then you know these are the same children who will grow up with an understanding mm -hmm. of heritage and the importance of heritage for something like tourism so if some of these kids go up and go into the tourist sector they will have mm -hmm. that sensitivity sensitivity they will realize that yes uh, you know heritage and history has a great role to play absolutely so you know we recently heard amdabad being you know the world city and overpowering yeah. this delhi and bombay for that matter so you know ahmedabad talking about city yeah. so your take on it being the world city uh it's a wonderful city and uh, certainly it deserved very much to be made a world heritage city uh, the we world heritage city with unesco the mm. application process is important you have to apply you have to make your dossier very well you have to apply and i would say that other cities can take an example from that how did they apply how did they pursue that whole process so and what parameters was that done that you know it was not delhi and mumbai for that matter uh delhi also had prepared a dossier mm -hmm. some years ago that was uh, given to unesco but then for various reasons uh, mm. it was withdrawn but uh, who knows maybe in the mm. few years it can be resubmitted and we can start again so being a world city you know yeah. what are the benchmarks that has to be created to be known as a world city world heritage city uh, they have a very uh, they have certain criteria main uh, criteria actually is that it should be it should have some what they in technical terms called outstanding universal value mm. so it has to be of importance which the whole world can benefit from it has some characteristics which are a lesson or an example to the whole world so mm. those are things i think delhi certainly has it delhi <laughs> certainly and i think and that for that matter every city of india is it unique as far as you know of as course. we just spoke about the variety what india is serving you know when we talk about the role of an individual especially when conservation preservation of this heritage site has been concerned you would like to talk and throw some light on what role i can play for that matter the viewers who are watching this segment you know what role they can play when we talk about heritage because it's for us it's for the generations to come there's a some misconception about mm. heritage is increasingly it's a professional uh, when you talk about conservation mm. it's also a professional field there are special conservation architects who work on it there are people who work and there are there's a pre professionalization mm. like in any other uh, field and these are some aspects are very technical very simple for instance uh, if you have an old building which is made before cement was introduced they used to use mm. lime mortar now you cannot repair those old buildings using cement because mm. it will damage the building mm. it will ruin its character mm. so you have to make sure that that lime mortar is being used so you know it is we should learn that also the role of the professional we should respect mm. the professional and make sure that if we are doing conservation it should mm -hmm. be done in a sensitive manner Do you think schools colleges for that matter educational institutions also play a very big role? Oh yes they certainly do. I mean you know sort of uh, as I said that's the first uh, you know the child steps out from his or her 
home and the first really institution they go to is mm. school and what they are taught over there is uh, of great importance absolutely so coming to your love for writing you know two books you have already written and the new one is on new delhi for that matter yeah. so what freshness or what what are readers for that matter can wait for you know what what will that book be serving to i always try to bring out hidden aspects and i'll tell you why hidden aspects part of it is based on my own research which i do i go and look at mm. documents i look at old letters uh, which people may not have looked at i look at also um, research which is done by other scholars because you know a lot of research which is done may be written in a phd thesis or in an academic work and the average public doesn't read mm. that so i try and bring those things forward so that people uh, who have not read those you know phd thesis or have not mm. done original research they will get a flavor of it uh, in a easy to read style that's the main thing that's that the I want main to thing do. you know you don't have to be that ferocious reader for <laughs> that matter everybody can get yes, connected exactly on that note thank you so much swapna ji for coming and for all the discussion really looking forward to your new book and hopefully not only delhi but you know india will grow as far as tourism is concerned thank you so much that was such a lovely conversation So that's it in today's edition. If you have any suggestions, any feedback, you can email us at the given address. Our email address is artsavere at ddkdelhi dot org dot in. आज के अंक में इतना ही टूरिज्म को हमने आगे बढ़ाना है क्योंकि जैसे कि अभी हमारे आज के इस अंक में हुई चर्चा घर बैठे लोग हम सभी मिलकर न केवल दिल्ली को बल्कि पूरे भारत को आगे ला सकते हैं हमारी पूरी टीम को दीजिए इजाजत नमस्कार